So we are now in module two, medication management for patients and caregivers, module two. Who is this course for? Patients, caregivers, and family members. And the course format is videos, and there's the optional live Q&A for those who are attending the live workshop. And at the end, we'll have um, self-assessment quizzes and practical tools for daily use. My name is Olufemi Williams, and I'm a pharmacist in Pennsylvania, USA. The course objectives, empower patients and caregivers to safely manage medications, improve understanding of medication use and adherence, build skills to prevent medication errors and manage side effects, and promote active participation in healthcare decisions. We want the patient and the caregiver to be actively participating in healthcare decisions. So what did we learn in module one? Module one was the introduction to medication management. And the topics there were, what is medication management? Why proper medication use matters for your health and the roles of caregivers and healthcare providers. So you can see module one in the school um, classroom. Um, I'll tell you more about that later. So that's what we did in module one. So now we're going to module two, types of medications and what they do. So we have a total of nine modules and we're on module two now. The learning outcomes for module two differentiate between prescription over the counter, properly, pop, popularly known as OTC and herbal medications. Also, we want to understand why each type of medication is used in treatment. So the topics we are going to be going through, the overview of prescription medications, understanding OTC medications and when to use them, herbal remedies and supplements, do they work, are they safe, and then medication labels, how to read them. So prescription medications. So these are prescribed by a healthcare provider. So when you're feeling sick or you're going for a checkup, you go to see a healthcare provider. That could be a, a doctor, a physician assistant, a nurse. You see them and if they can, you know, do a diagnosis just by asking you a few questions, they will write out a prescription, either give you a physical prescription to take to a pharmacy, or they could send it electronically to a pharmacy. In some cases, you know, if the ailment is recurring, they might want to do some tests. So they will send you with a prescription to a lab where they will do some tests. But generally speaking, once the healthcare provider has concluded their diagnosis and they think they know what is wrong with you, they will write a medication. If you don't need a medication, they will tell you, oh, all you need is a healthy diet and um, healthy diet and exercise. And then they'll tell you the things to avoid. But if they believe you need some medication, they will write a prescription for you to take to the pharmacy or they will send it to the pharmacy directly with an electronic prescription. So those are prescription medications. They are things that the doctor has to write before you can get them. Now, if the, there are some other medications, we'll get to that. But these prescription medications are usually for chronic or acute conditions. Acute conditions are like infections. If you have an infection, the doctor will write an antibiotic. If they believe you need an antibiotic, write an antibiotic for you to get from the pharmacy. That you need a prescription. If you have um, high blood pressure or diabetes or a respiratory disease, it is very likely that you need a prescription medication, which you can only get by a prescriber's prescription. So you cannot just walk up to the pharmacy and say, oh, I want 
some blood pressure medication. A doctor has to do a proper diagnosis and make sure that this is what the problem is, check all the vital signs, and then decide which medication is best for you. Um, so it's important that when you get this prescription, you follow the prescription exactly as it's written. And we'll also talk more about the instructions. Over-the-counter medications. These are medications that you can get without a prescription. So you can go to the pharmacy, walk into the store, you know, pick up the medication. These are usually the pain relievers or allergy medications and vitamins. So you can just walk into the pharmacy, pick them up and buy without a prescription. You don't need to see a doctor to buy them. So commonly, most commonly, those are pain relievers. The common ones we know are acetaminophen, ibuprofen, things like that. So you can get them without a prescription. Now, there are some times when the, depending on the milligram, how the dose, the same medication could be over the counter at a lower dose, but might be prescription at a higher dose. So that is something like ibuprofen. At a lower dose of 200 milligram, you can get it over the counter. But once it's getting to 400, 800, it is now a prescription. So for over-the-counter medications too, you have to follow the dosage instructions. Now, the reason they are over the counter is because they believe they are not, you know, as dangerous or the likelihood that you have serious um, adverse reactions from over-the-counter is not as high as prescription medication. So they allow you to buy them over-the-counter, but that doesn't mean that you can just take over-the-counter medications anyhow. You still have to follow the instructions. There are some over-the-counter medications that, if not taken properly, can result in serious um, health injury. Common medications like acetaminophen, which is an ingredient in Tylenol, could cause acute liver damage if you do not follow the instructions. Things like ibuprofen could cause kidney damage if you know you do not follow the instructions or if it interacts with some other medications. So that's why when you're taking over-the-counter medications, they are generally safe, but you still have to be careful when you take them. And um, later when I talk about the um, medication profile, these are things that will help you to check, you know, if you're using the right dosing, if you are combining it with your other medications, you'll be able to check if these over-the-counter medications are safe for you. So we also have herbal remedies and supplements. Now, Herbal remedies, they are from herbs, yes, they are natural, but that doesn't mean that they are always safe. Sometimes they can be very potent. So when you take an herbal remedy, always make sure to check to see if you are feeling any different. If you are not feeling normal, always check. No, does it have anything to do with this new herbal remedy you just started taking? Sometimes they interact. There are some herbal medications that interact with a lot of prescription medications. So also that medication profile that I said you should set up, you'll be able to check if your herbal remedies and supplements, you'll be able to check if they interact with your medications. Now, it is always important to discuss these supplements you want to take with your doctor or pharmacist so that they can check to see if there's any interaction. Now that tool that I'm going to give you also, you can use it to check if your herbal medication interacts with your any of your medications. Now, understanding the labels, you will notice when you buy any of these herbal remedies, it always says that the FDA has not, you know, it says, These statements, this is an example, 
These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, or prevent any disease. So many of these herbal remedies, you say, oh, this herbal remedy is for weight loss, this one is for sleep, this one is for this. You have to be very careful because even though they have been found to work, the Food and Drug Administration has not been able to, you know, do the tests to really come out and say, okay, yes, these medications work. So we are just taking them by faith that, yes, the manufacturers are telling us this is good for sleep, they are telling us this is good for weight loss, and then we use it. But you should know that the FDA has not tested them individually to make sure that that formulation actually works. So you will notice that all these um, herbal remedies and many of these herbal supplements have that, it's required for them to put that on their label that the FDA has not, um, you know, even though they are aware that they are being sold, but they have not um, evaluated these statements. So just to have that at the back of your mind. But that doesn't mean that you cannot buy these supplements. A lot of people will vouch that, oh, this works for them. But just to let you know, as a pharmacist, we have to let you know that the FDA has not evaluated these claims, these statements. Now, this is another important area. Medication labels, how to read them. Now, this is a topic on its own, but just to let you be clear, the easiest thing for you is when you read a, a label, just follow it. If you don't understand it, go to your pharmacist. The pharmacist will be very happy to tell you what it means. So you will see some things like um, when you see the drug name, for some drugs you will see EC, that is enteric coated. The manufacturer has designed it in such a way they don't want it to dissolve in the acid of the stomach. So they want it to pass through the acid of the stomach hole and then dissolve when it gets to the small intestine. Some you will see ER, extended release. Some you see DR, delayed release. They have all these things. They are different. So when you see something like maybe metformin tablet, then you see metformin ER tablet. These are all different, meaning that they are released in your body in different ways. Most of the products that you see ER, extended release, they are probably once a day, and in some cases, twice a day, because the manufacturer has made it in such a way that it will release the active ingredient over maybe 12 hours or over 24 hours. So those, the name on your drug is very important. Now, the pharmacist knows that and they usually are very, very good at giving you the right medication. Now, warning labels, before I talk of expiration dates, warning labels. When the pharmacist has a sticker and says, swallow whole, they don't want you to chew on a prescription that is designed to release further down in your digestive system, like in your small intestine. If you chew it, not only will it cause damage to your um, tongue and to your mouth, but then the medication will not be released the right way. There are some medications that they'll tell you, do not cut, do not crush, because the medication has been designed in such a way that they don't want you to crush or chew or cut because once you do that, you have destroyed the um, way the manufacturer wants it to release into your system. So always look at these things. Do not, if they say swallow whole 
And then there are some that they'll tell you to chew. Some they'll say chew and swallow and drink water. Some they'll say do not chew, swallow whole, you know. So always read the instructions. Don't just make your assumption. If they, if they say take one tablet, don't take two. Don't say, oh, I'm feeling pain. I'm going to take two. No. Or if they say take one tablet twice a day. Usually when they say twice a day, what you do is you divide 24 hours in a day, divide it by two. So that's every 12 hours. So usually when they say twice a day, you take it one in the morning, probably 8 a.m. and one at 8 p.m. If they say three times a day, that means you divide the day, 24 hours into three. So that's every eight hours. So when they say take it three times a day, they don't want you to take all three Oh, take one at 8 a.m., one at 12, one at... No, no, no. They want you to divide it equally throughout the day. So if they say take three times a day, it's usually every eight hours, as best as you can. So that means if you take it at 8 a.m., the next one is at eight hours from then, which will be two. Eight plus eight, no, which is four. So one at 8 a.m., one at 4 p.m., and then 4 plus 8 is 12. So that's 1 at 12 midnight. Now, if that is not a good time, you can change it to taking 1 at 6 a.m. 6 plus 8 is 14. 1 at 2 p.m. And then 2 plus 8 is 10. And then 1 at 10 p.m. So if they tell you take something three times a day, it's usually 6 a.m., 2 p.m., 10 p.m. If they tell you take it four times a day, that is very difficult to do, but usually that could be like an antibiotic. If they want you to take it four times a day, and what most manufacturers have done is they've tried to move away from medications that you have to take four times a day, except probably when you're on admission. But if you are an outpatient, they try not to give you medications that you have to take four times a day. But if they say four times a day, that means you divide a 24-hour day into four, which is every six hours. So that will be 6 a.m., 12 in the afternoon, 6 p.m., 12 midnight. And that will be four times a day. So those are how to read the labels. And if it's not clear to you, always ask your doctor or your pharmacist. Now, talking about expiration dates. This is a question we get a lot. Somebody calls and says, oh, my medication says it expired last month. Can I still take it? Some people say, oh, yeah, I think we can still take it. It still has the medication. It's just that it's less. No, 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 no. That is very wrong. Let me explain to you what happens. When a medication is manufactured, Let's imagine it was 100%. Sometimes it's probably 95% to 105%. But that's for the purpose of our discussion. Let's imagine it's 100%. When the medication is breaking down and it's losing its potency and it goes down to 90% or something like that, yes, 90% will still work. However, Remember that when it's breaking down, the 10% that was being degraded might be degrading into a toxic um, component. So the fact that there's still 95% or 90% of the good medication, there might be 10% of something that might be harmful. Now, in some cases, there's no problem because the breakdown product is safe. But there are some cases, like the old drug we used to take, tetracycline, where the breakdown pro um, product was toxic. So once you see the expiration date, once it has passed, it's better to be safe than sorry. Just discard um, your medica that medication. Don't take medications after the expiration date even if you think oh somebody told me i can still take it no don't because 
you don't know which of the medications has toxic breakdown products. So once your medication is expired, the manufacturer has checked and they say, oh, this thing is good for the next three years. Once those three years pass, or if they say 18 months, once that 18 months pass, please do not use the medication. It's better to be safe than sorry. Now, in conclusion, we have talked about um, module two. We have talked about prescription medications, over-the-counter medications, herbal remedies, and how to read the labels. So in if this was live, this would be the time to ask questions and answers. For those of you listening to the recording, um, you can put your questions in the school community at school.com slash mywebpharmacist. Now, next we'll be going to module three, organizing your medications. And the learning outcomes will be how to create an effective system for managing multiple medications and learn practical tips for organizing and storing medications safely. Um, the topics, how to use a medication list, pill organizers, safe storage of medications, and how to proper, proper, properly dispose of old and unused medications. So that is what we are going to be discussing in module three. And thanks for listening.